Good morning from Bali. I have invited in this sweet little background with me this morning. And so hopefully you can hear me and hear the beautiful fountain that's behind me. Uh, today we are talking about getting off the cash flow roller coaster. And I'm loving um, the, some of the comments that have come in after you even saw the initial announcement of this because, and I even had some like former clients be like, right, let's talk, like, because they know that this is one of the things that happens. So if you are anything like this, um, and I've certainly been at this place many times in my business because you got into your business because you love what you do. You got into your business because you're great at actually doing the work, right? So if you're a coach or you're a designer or you're a writer, I hear this all the time that people are like, oh, I wish so much. Make sure you can hear me if you can, just to give me a like to let me know that you can hear me. Um, that you wish so much you could just concentrate on doing your magic, on just doing what you do best, right? So what happens is you get so excited about an offer, you have something that you wanna share, and you go out there and you share it with the world, you start bringing in clients, and then you're solely focused on supporting those clients. Well, what happens then is that you actually stop doing your sales and marketing, right? So you might be totally focused on working with your clients, creating these great results for them, but what slows is all of that sales and marketing. So this is something, and then that's what creates this like roller coaster where all of a sudden you've got a bunch of money and then all of a sudden your sales and marketing slow because you're totally focused on, on serving this client and then you're kind of back at ground zero or, or maybe that client project ends and you've got nothing in the hopper for your next, like the next thing that you're going for, right? So I want to talk about a few things of why I see this happening a lot, um, not the least of which, which is the most obvious, right, which is that you're not doing consistent sales and marketing. But I really also want to talk about some common pitfalls that I see that happen. This kind of connects as well to like this hamster wheel of not enough that we talk about because often people are, um, th this you know, playing small, if you will, is where you will sometimes clients like this will actually get just enough clients. So there's this extremely common, um, you know, behavior, which is that we get like comfortable essentially, and we stop shooting for more. So if you get one client and actually depending on what your prices are right now, your one client or two clients or three clients might actually completely take up your time capa capacity, right? So you don't even have the capacity to take on more clients, let alone do your sales and marketing. So it's really, really key, number one, that you're, you're looking at your prices so that you know that you're working at a price point that is sustainable, that is also creating the space for you to do your sales and marketing. Um, but the other thing is, is really recognizing where your time is best spent. So if you are someone, for example, who loves to do the work you do, but you're not so great at the sales and marketing, if you had someone on your team who was great at the sales and marketing, and you could then focus on doing what you love, how much better could those two roles coexist? So as you all know, I'm a huge fan of you doubling down on your genius, on doing what you absolutely are great at. And most of the time, I will tell you that the people that I work with, you are great at talking about what you do. You are the person who is landing those deals, who is getting those clients. And so often people think that they suck at sales or they hate marketing, but all of this is mindset stuff. All of it is how you're holding your own relationship with your ability to actually talk about what you do with so much heart and so much passion. So that's the first mindset shift that I want you to change right now is that you are actually really good and the most qualified person to, to do the sales and marketing of your business because you're the most passionate about it. You're the most knowledgeable about it. And often what I'm doing with my clients is I'm helping them align that passion, that knowledge that they have with the way that they are marketing and sharing their genius in the world. So often I see people trying to like kind of square peg round hole this. What I also see is so, so common is that what you do for your clients or what you do as your genius, people bring that into how they're trying to do their sales and marketing. Um, I'll give you an example of this. Like if you are doing digital um, 
say you do some work for you're like a consultant or you do some work online so I'll, I'll give one name one example which is that you're able to do um, like I spoke to somebody recently who does like funnels and he can do all this really great like online website funnels like all this stuff for people so when he goes to do his own sales and marketing he will kind of do what he knows right he's like okay I gotta create this I gotta create this I gotta create this but when you're looking for low hanging fruit in your business or you're looking right now to like get clients or start that lead generation sometimes thank you Marley sometimes it's not actually the thing that you are doing for your clients so the thing that you're doing for your clients isn't always going to be what gets you money another great example if you're a copywriter yes of course you want examples of your copywriting um, and that you are you know great at that you want to have those somewhere that people can see but is that just doing your copywriting or just doing your your beautiful writing is that going to get you clients not always because there's a very specific sales and marketing um, there are some really great easy ways you know to do sales and marketing that actually don't have to do with like this big long complicated thing people hire you because you know how to handle these complexities right whether that be like in-depth heartfelt coaching or copywriting or design and development that's what they're hiring you for they're hiring you for this big project and hopefully you're making a good amount of money for it it's usually an overarching goal it's a long period of time you're holding their big vision you're using your expertise to do it but when it comes to actually you making sales and finding more of those people you don't need that big overcomplicated process and you know yes you can build your foundations and your systems if you want but if you're looking for that low-hanging fruit and you're wanting to go out there and make money as soon as possible you need to start doing really like direct things and so this is actually a, a great example where you being the salesperson so um, if you are stuck in doing a lot of the uh, small tasks that someone else definitely can do right like that an assistant definitely can do and you guys if anyone listens to me I'm a huge fan of bringing on support because if you have spent say hours of your time sitting behind a computer trying to figure something out because you're not that good at it you're not that fast at it um, you know I'm all for learning things but if that puts you out of the ring of being somewhere where you can potentially meet your next client or that you're not directly um, emailing calling you know um, being at events where you can start meeting more people so all of this is like lead generation and it's also directly making the offer so there's ways to basically not overcomplicate it to not make it this long journey and yes I want you to have like some of those systems in place but the key thing to remember here is that what you do your brilliant amazing skills is not always you know the how you're going to get your business as well do you see what I'm saying because it's a different thing this is why people hire business coaches because you need to learn how to do the marketing you need to learn how to do the sales most importantly you need to learn how to do lead generation and you need to have the systems in place to make sure that that can be rolling even if you get your your head completely down and and in the nitty-gritty with one client is that still working for you is something still happening in your sales and marketing and your lead generation so that when you kind of like bring your head up from for air after a certain client or a certain project that you're not at ground zero right so super super key on that one um, I'm going to see what other fabulous tips I have for you here because I have some great ones. Basically, you know, this is all about looking at um, not, you know, getting off this roller coaster. And one of the biggest things you can do to get off the roller coaster right now is is to set up something consistent so that you have got lead generation. So first thing that you can do actually to look at for this for the solution for this is what has been working and this is why I actually bring up like networking events it doesn't have to sound like that if you are allergic to the idea of a networking event it can actually just be a party most many many of my clients over the years have been people that I've met personally um, that I've actually done speaking events so that's another thing if you would all do speaking events or workshops it's a really really valuable thing for you to do that so um, but the reason why I say uh, 
you know, you using that time to be at networking events is because this is your magic, your energy, and that that's, that is what people are drawn to for whatever work you do. You know, they want your expertise, your knowledge. They want to feel safe. They want to trust you. So you, you guys have probably heard this. Yeah, I know, right? Being at the bottom of the roller coaster. And here's one thing I will say about being at the bottom of the roller coaster is, and this is, I work with a lot of people in this delicate, precious place, which is that sometimes when we are evolving, you know, we are rapidly evolving in this and you're, you're, you know, I work with a lot of people who have this message or gift coming through them. And what happens is as that evolves, like it can feel a little shaky. We're almost like, how am I, how, how am I to do this? Like there's something new that's emerging forth. And sometimes things are not clear enough. So like great example of this is that um, I know a consultant that, you know, takes care of really high level businesses and I have wanted to hire her. She's like really, really great at like um, what I feel is like kind of management consulting and next level consulting. I've wanted to hire her, but I know enough about where, well, this is actually a while ago. I now actually have a team in place come to think of it that's taking care of this. But a while ago, I wanted to hire her and all of her ads and her leads and her marketing were so convincing to me. And I was like, oh my God, I totally want to hire this woman. But here's what I knew. And here's the compassion that I feel for so many others is it wasn't clear enough yet for me. I knew that I was going through this. I have been, if any of you guys have been following my work, I've been going through this like total metamorphosis. Like basically the way I've been serving clients has not been serving me. I, I'm kind of just unsatisfied with it. I'm ready for something new. And sometimes in those metamorphosis times, we're not clear yet enough, right? So it's really hard to do your sales and marketing and to get all these systems in place when you're not even sure how you wanna serve or what you wanna do. So I wanna just bring some compassion in there that if you're at all feeling kind of like lost or in that time of transition of figuring out, yeah, where am I going next and how am I bringing this into the world, then, then that can be a time where it's really hard to go full steam ahead into your sales and marketing, right? So that's the one piece that that I actually not necessarily want to allow for in that in that roller coaster time because you want to be smart. You don't want to put yourself in a um, a state of fight or flight and having kind of some of these challenges where all of a sudden you're in scarcity mode, right? Yeah, space of transition. This is an intense time, and this is also I will say why the support of a coach, you know, because we we only know with what we we only go with what we know right and we will always gravitate towards what we know so we end up on this kind of hamster wheel doing the same thing or even getting stuck in the same thought processes and this is why it's so helpful even i have to work with other coaches and love working with other coaches and masterminds because you, you need perspective to help you get out of the box. This is why we go to conferences, right? And I know Marley is who's watching. I met her at conferences. And, but this is why we go to conferences. This is why we watch other people online. It's like all of a sudden that light bulb will go off. And when you're working with a coach, this is what I do with my clients all the time. I just had an awesome call yesterday. Same thing where she literally, her words, and I hear this all the time, she was like, oh my God, it's so obvious. Like it was right there, but she couldn't see it because her mind was still doing the same thing that she's really good at, but the one thing I was able to drop into was go, okay, well, you know, how about this? And she was like, oh my God, yeah, that's exactly what it is. And that happens all the time. And it can be the simplest thing, right? And I know all of you watching know this, that that aha moment is just like, it's right there. It's literally from being right here to right there in that aha moment. So there's some powerful, and that's transformation, right? It's when you have this like eureka moment and this eye-opening thing that you're like, how did I not see that before? But then you do, and it can really help change things. Most importantly, it can get you moving again. And when you're feeling kind of stuck or you're feeling um, not as excited or you're not feeling clear, when you don't have clarity, like that's a really, really challenging feeling. So the thing I was talking about before, which I really just want to make sure that I hit the, the kind of final nail on, is how we often overcomplicate it so much. And especially in this day and age where we're seeing everything online of like, you know, you have to create a funnel and it has to have all these email sequences. And there's nothing wrong with that. I think it's really, really valuable, 
especially, especially if you're wanting to really grow and scale. If you're wanting to start getting, getting into serving hundreds and thousands of people, it's paramount that you have your systems in place like that. Uh, but in terms of you um, getting off this sales roller coaster, one of the key things that you need to do right now is look at your systems, look at your mindset, and look at where you're spending your time and energy. So this one, you guys hear me talk about all the time, it's really, really key. Where are you spending your time and energy? So if you are completely mired in details, if you're doing stuff in your business that you just really have no business doing, um, you know, if you've spent like days or hours on either your website or your bookkeeping or these things that just don't come so naturally to you, you actually might like it. You might be really good at it. It might be fun for you. Not good at it, but you know what I'm saying? Like you're good at figuring things out. You're good at creating solutions. But is that what's bringing money in the door to you? And I would say no. <laughs> you, you know, you doing your bookkeeping, Great, I love that you have clarity on your finances, but is that actually going to be making you a sale? So you need to really be looking at where is your time and energy going so that you can focus that specifically on, on uh, revenue generating. And then the systems piece is, is also very much about your team. So one of the things, um, I started doing this years ago, this was probably in 2013, I always talk about this story because it was a really, really powerful um, example of this. I had had an office now already outside of my um, of my house, which was really key and a key step that I love to, for all of you guys to do. So I'd had an office outside of my house and I'd hired an assistant. And the hiring an assistant, having the office outside of my house and hiring the assistant at that point because I'd gone through this like ups and downs prior um, in my own evolution, right? But I was putting out, because I had left, yeah, I'd left a startup at that point. I'd just done this beautiful big training and I'd been seeing people out of my, um, house which was lovely but now I was ready to like take it to the next level so I hired on an assistant the other best thing that I did is I even hired on um, another team that was going to be doing like all the like tech support and the website stuff all the stuff that I knew how to do I've been doing it for a long long time but really my time was not best spent there so to be able to hire both of those people on was freaking magic because here's what happens when you have more people in your business and not just you when it comes to actually doing the work and all the time and energy that's required to do the work you need to do, when you have, you have got basically these two hands, these two arms yourself, and not to mention all the genius flowing through you, but when you hire more people, you duplicate yourself. You duplicate your hands. So that's the way I would always see it in my head as I was like, I literally just saw it was almost like, what's the, one of those like, um, you know, effigies of the beautiful, like so many hands and arms. It was like, I wanted just to have so many hands and arms, especially when you have content that you're trying to push out. It's like, how can I have just more people helping push out my content so that that gets out more? Because when you get mired and stuck, nothing, you know, no content goes out, which means no marketing's getting done, which is, means you're not on anyone's radar. If you fall silent and people forget that you even have offers, Offers, then no wonder when you look up that you're not going to have anyone like knocking on your door. So you want to see this is all about sustainable growth too, right? So, you know, essentially you can only take on so many clients at one time or you can look at to see how you can scale. So this year, actually, I'm going to be bringing on some assistant coaches and I'm so excited for that. I can't believe I haven't done it so far, but to be able to really bring on more coaches so that I can like, you know, totally double down on my genius, focus on what I'm great at, but have this like really robust team that can help my clients in all these different ways. Um, and all of this stuff too, like when you bring on other clients, or sorry, uh, people on your team, it's such a control thing. But this is why I always encourage every single one of my clients to do it, even if it's just starting with a VA, because you're learning. You have to kind of like build and grow this muscle of what it means to delegate, of what it means to ask for what you want, um, rely on somebody, trust somebody to do what you want. Uh, but coming back to that story in 2013, when I brought on those people and it freed up my space to do what I am best at, which is connecting with people, which is serving people, which is creating my products and my services, 
I could not start throwing money fast enough at my teams. Basically, I even started them at this really low amount. I like had to even negotiate with one of them to be like, would you mind just starting with me with a small amount and then we'll work, work up to it? And it, I totally did. I basically had to start throwing her money as fast as possible so that I could have more of her hours and more of her time. We learned a lot, of course. Um, this other team was rocking and rolling and I ended up doing that. The beginning of 2014, I had the most one of the most successful years thus far of my business because I had that incredible team and because it was not just me, because I was able and capable to do so much more than just me. Um, yeah, my business went through the roof. I was doing like international keynote speaking events um, everywhere. I, of course, also fell in love. My business was going through the roof. I moved halfway around the world. Um, and I will also say there's a lot of this that, you know, just coming back to the like intention side and the, the side that I really love with alignment and you getting clear um, is I had read The Miracle Morning uh, and I had been implementing all that visualization and affirmation. So if you're really looking for something to support you also on that side of things um, and anyone who's read The Miracle Morning, for a little what what and um, likes and loves because I still meet people to this day who are like oh, I'm just reading this and it's totally blowing my mind and it is a genuinely a life changer not necessarily even that you have to read that book but it's a great small read and they even have specific ones for like entrepreneurs or writers or even real estate agents things like that but ultimately all it is is you having your clear goals in place and doing like affirmations and visualizations every day for what you're wanting to create. And you'd be surprised, like the things that we want to create in our life and what we want to call in, we often are concentrating on what's not working, right? We're, we're concentrating on what's not working or what we don't know or what's feeling stuck or um, what we don't know how to do or what we're afraid of. But there's such major power in focusing on what do you want to call in, right? What do you really want to actually create? So I just want to see if there's anything else. I've got my trusty iPad here um, for telling you. Um, yeah, actually, I think that that's really it on this one. Besides the fact that you know it's so common that it's the the cobbler's shoes. You know that like often we are the last person that we take care of in our business, and we're it's so easy just to take care of our clients. Um, another great book tip for you, um, which you guys hear me talk about quite a bit, and I'll link to all my book recommendations here in the comments, is uh, The E-Myth. And just that framework in the E-Myth that's really powerful in this scenario, on the, especially the cash flow um, roller coaster, is how often you, know, you are really, you have the strength at, at either the visionary or being the technician and um, the really, really like doing the work, right? So if you're a videographer, if you're an um, editor, writer, um, coach, whatever that is, you're great at being the technician and you also might be a great uh, visionary. There's a layer in the middle that often gets totally missed, which is the manager. It's not very sexy, um, you know, it's not very fun. So it's all of that like managing the stuff, making sure that there's processes and plans and um, I'm pretty geeky. So there's a question here I want to answer. What have been some ways and places you found your support team? Great question. I could do a whole nother live on this one. Best practices and lessons for vetting and delegating and how to communicate needs but not write the entire blueprint. And in particular, if you can't hire folks who may be experts but not at your pay scale. This is for marketing, sales kind of processes or whatever. Right, okay. So, Essentially, uh, I could do a whole other live. This is a good thing actually for my team to hear is that next week's live should be all about hiring and delegating and the best places and ways um, that I've done it because I'm a huge fan of talking about this hiring. Um, so one of the first things that I always say for anyone that if you're looking for someone is to create a wish list. So again, kind of back to the affirmations and visualizations that I was just talking about, like I want you to be clear on who you're calling in. So creating that wish list, what this does as well is it really helps you focus on what are your skills, you know, so you can even make, write this in a list, like here's what I love doing, here's what I'm really great at, here's what I want to do. The key here is I don't want you to opt out of things that actually 
you are really great at, like kind of coming back to that example of, of sales, is you're like, I don't want to do sales because I don't think I'm good at it. But I will tell you, I actually have a client who, um, and I can link to this, um, Faith, the, my uh, Spotlight series video with Faith, um, which I have a whole Spotlight series actually that you can sign up for that's really, really great. And there's one of them in there with my former client, Faith. When she started working with me, she couldn't even like charge money. She was literally like doing work for free, basically. She was like forgetting to charge people, forgetting to have the money conversation and just starting to go to work for them. And now she's like, can't, she can't even recognize herself. She's like, I love doing sales. I love being the one who closes the sales. She realized she's really actually super good at it. So she totally shifted her mindset around that, which I think is fantastic. So when it comes to finding somebody, when it comes to finding somebody like maybe um, not at your pay scale. So I'm, what I'm hearing is you might feel like you cannot afford someone. And um, this is an interesting thing because I think sometimes we see traditional marketing as this like, or not even traditional, <laughs> but like marketing as like social media, um, uh, there's definitely digital marketing, but I think that there's a lot. Uh, I think what I would first say, this really depends on where you are in your business and what level you're at in your business. Um, but because the, the first thing I will say is actually just coming back to what I just said, which is like you being the person that's actually at networking events, talking to people, creating those trusting relationships, being that salesperson. And then the key thing that may need, may need to happen on the back end is that you have more people that are helping you actually do the work, right? Um, if it's the opposite, that you're really needing somebody to do that sales and marketing and do that networking because you just really want to be doing the work, then that could easily be like a sales commission job. You know, there's salespeople out there all the time that are looking for either sales commission or flat commission, but that if they know they get a percentage of that project fee, then that's their incentive and people work like that all the time. So it kind of depends on where your structure is. I would also want to ask as a business owner, what has worked best for you in the past? You always really, you, you do want to follow some of the wisdom of your own experience and knowing what has worked. This is the reason I'm such a huge fan of networking is because nine times out of 10 people be like, well, it's because so-and-so met me at that one time where they saw me speak or they saw, you know, something that I did and then they reached out and we, and you have some kind of personal connection or touch. Um, social proof is another huge one. So, um, but there's also these direct ways that you can do it. And I want you guys to start thinking about direct ways. This is all relationships. So whether that be that you're actually like genuinely reaching out and talking to people, it's all these things that kind of don't scale, right? But that can be really, really powerful um, in terms of really reaching out and talking to people directly. And if you know that you're doing that and you've got, this is actually, I've done helped a lot of clients with this system, which is that you have have a really clear system in place of tracking those leads because what happens all the time is you'll meet a whole bunch of people um, at a party or something like that but then you don't follow up so it's all about like the art of the follow-up and so much of so much business is lost because there's no follow-up and I'm just as guilty of this like you get busy things get sidelined but that was one of the first things that I had my um, assistant do is I'm like I want to make sure that we're tracking these leads and now I, it's awesome because the way that my systems are set up not only can I track leads uh, and know you know who I've spoken to and where they were at at the time what they were interested in which is really key because if I have a new offering that comes out it might not be good for these certain people but it'll be good for these people so I have all that in um, also as I talked about on a few lives ago, I was talking about how I was able to actually go back to that same information and look and see what my sales, uh, like basically my sales conversion rate was, like how many people talked to me and what that helped identify for me was my quality of leads. So that's also another thing is like how much of your time and energy is spent on not qualified leads and how can you increase that quality of your leads. So I'm going to do a whole nother live about um, hiring and, and delegating and some of those lessons learned because I think that that's a really hot topic. So thank you so much for that question, Kirthi. And um, as you know, if you have any questions, you can ask them here and I'll maybe even try to write a little bit more in the comments below.
I love your comments and your questions and um, love your likes and hearts on this if you enjoyed it. Please share it if it, you feel it would be helpful and useful for other people. As always, you can find all of my work. I have lots and lots of resources on willowlovesyou.com and I'm always popping on Instagram Live, um, Instagram Stories, uh, so I'm also Willow Loves You over there. And I'm just super excited to, to hear if you guys can get yourself off this, this roller coaster and start creating this sustainable growth. Um, another really, really huge piece of this, I will say, is about having that clear vision and wanting to play big because often the reason why you're going down is because you're actually not um, really shooting high enough for that big vision. So it's big time mindset stuff. Um, so just something to note there and really be watching. That's right. That's exactly right. Up and to the right or however it looks on this video. <laughs> okay. Lots of love, babes, from Bali. Hope you have a great day or evening wherever you are.